Let's we'll see what happens here. Is it, is it when it says L-I-V-E, that means it's ready to go? Mm -hmm. uh, so hello, uh, <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. I apologize. It is completely my fault. Uh, I was up in another meeting, and I was like, hey, I've got to go. Uh, they're like, chief, wait, we need this. I'm like, no, 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 i got to go. So I'm looking. It looks like I'm eight, nine, ten minutes late. So the first post, I'm hoping someone says, chief, it's okay. You can tease me a little bit, though, because it is my, it is 100% my fault. Um, I'll take I'll, I'll take the blame for that. Uh, so so again, this is our uh, our monthly meeting uh, here in in July. I cannot believe that we're already halfway through um, halfway through July. I mean, to the twentieth, more than halfway through. August is just around the corner. We'll soon we'll be talking about um, uh, back to school stuff in our city, back to school uh, situations and, and plans and everything getting getting set. So we're well into our uh, summer initiative. Um, uh, some of the, the areas that we're focusing on are community days and events, our partnerships with the Boys and Girls Club. I'm excited to, to talk about that. We've, we've had some basketball days. Uh, and and last, last Thursday, we had uh, kickball. So we had uh, officers and, and, and kids playing against officers and kids. And uh, I got there like in the second inning, and they allowed, they allowed me, right? They allowed me to get in the game. And uh, I got to play a little bit. and I had some fun, so it's it's, it's good to, to interact with those with those young people, man. It just keeps me young. Now, most people say I'm way too old to be out there running around on a kickball field, um, but man, I tell you what, it was like the best part of the week. It was the best part of the week. Um, so who have I got uh, Cameron. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate that. Loud and clear. I think I think Sarah's telling me that we're good to go. Uh, Richard. G good afternoon, Richard. I appreciate you, my friend. Linda says, "Stop being late, Linda. I'm working on it. I promise. I, look, I'm gonna be like th Sarah. I'm gonna be like 30 minutes early tonight. Okay. I'm gonna to make up for it. I'm gonna log on 10 minutes early tonight at the for the six o'clock session. We'll be doing it at 5:50. Uh, so, Linda, I apologize. <laughs> Carrie, it's good to have you on board. Thank you so much. Uh, you're good. Thanks, Hat Richard. I appreciate that, man. My support. All right, finally, that's good." Um, so uh, what I like to do in these sessions is kind of give you an idea of where we're at right now, things that we have going on, and then um, things we have coming up and maybe even some some talk about long term. Um, so I will do my best. Please forgive me if I miss a post. Sarah will try to to uh, keep me on, on track if I miss one or ask her to scroll back up. Uh, so I, I apologize. If I miss, we'll go back and look through. I'll make sure that I answer each one. Uh, it just may be in a, a direct um, do you email on Facebook, a direct Facebook Twitter. We Twitter, Instagram, yeah. We can, we can message. Message is the right word. That we'll get it back to you. So we got it. Uh, Rachel, wish wish we could stop the fireworks in my neighborhood. You know, Rachel, it's a good point. We're going to talk a little bit about that as we move as we move forward. Liz, it's good to have you on board. Thank you. Thanks for being here today. Um, so uh, where we're at right now, uh, we just did first first thing. What I like to do is kind of give you an update on the crime in our city. Um, and then move to what what initiatives or, or things we have going on, and then what's coming up in the future, and then we'll talk about some hot topics. And I think fireworks is going to be is going to be uh, one for sure. Uh, Kirby, is, wait, hello, Kirby. Good afternoon. Good to have you on board. Doing good things in the city. How does one apply for the department? Oh my gosh, that's great. All right, so let me let me go back and start where we're at right now. So uh, the city is currently looking at about eleven percent reduction in crime overall. Every department reports their, their data, their information to the FBI. The FBI puts that all together, and then they can rank things. They all, we also report our clearance rates, meaning a crime occurs, is an arrest made or not. And the FBI takes that data and puts it together and says, you know, this is kind of the average of what clearance rates should be. So if you have a robbery, how many should you clear? How many homicides should you clear a year on an average? What's the national average? So if the FBI called today and took our data, the city overall is down uh, about 11 percent in crime so there are some individual crime categories that we have an increase in so we have our violent crime we have our property crime and then we have crime that when you put that together that's our, our overall number our property crime or thing our, our, our violent crime are things like our homicides our shootings our aggravated assaults our robberies and our rapes okay uh, our property crime is our burglaries our larcenies our auto theft theft from buildings, theft from vehicles. You put all those together and that gives you our overall crime for the city. So right now in our robberies, 
we're just about even with where we were. We may be up two or three, but we're about even. Our rapes, we're about even. We're probably down one or two, but right about even. We're down in our shootings by two. We had two more people shot this time last year than this year, meaning that shot in the arm, the shoulder, uh, the leg, wherever. You didn't, there, it's not a, a shooting that resulted in a death. Um, stabbings, we're up 13 in our stabbings. So if we had 50 last year, this year we have uh, 63. We have a difference of 13. Uh, and most of those happened early on in the year, and a lot of them are domestic. Uh, kitchen knife, butcher knife, that type thing. We have a few stabbings on the on the street, but most of them are domestic related. We are up in our domestics. We have about seven or about 27 more domestics this year than last year, and that continues the trend. For four years in a row, we're seeing our domestic spike um, increase. That is one thing that we have not made a strong turn for me in. We kind of leveled out in March, but then we've seen them go back up as we've got into the summer. Um, we are down in our, like I said, we talked about our rapes already. We are down in our burglaries. We're down in our auto thefts. We're down in our large, about all our property crime. So you average that together. Homicides. Um, our homicides are doubled this year from where they were last year. And I'm going to be open and transparent. This time last year we had nine, and today we have 18. Now, of those 18 murders, 12 are cleared by arrest. 12 are cleared. Um, and we've cleared two more from last year. Of the 18 that I look at, five or six are domestic related that happened inside an apartment, inside a house, inside a resident. I've even had one that was a 10 month old little boy. Um, but arrests are made in that. So the, the cases that we're having, are, I, I am, uh, we're, we're doing, the detectives are doing very good with the arrests that, of those cases. They work around the clock, they take those cases personally, and they're doing a good job. Um, but it is some issue with 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 our homicide numbers. Um, we had a homicide last Monday. That individual has already been identified. Warrants are on file. Uh, we had a, a homicide that happened earlier in the year. Uh, we believe the individual fled the city, and we think now just got some information. We believe he's back. So we'll be looking to, once those arrests, there'll be two more that are cleared. Uh, but, but a lot of our homicides have happened inside. Uh, like I said, four or five are, are domestic related, one certainly being a little boy. Um, but we've seen um, most of the individuals know each other. Uh, there's arguments. We just had a homicide in, involving two individuals that may have been alcohol involved, possibly some mental illness, uh, and, and a ball bat. Uh, but we were there, and within 30 minutes, the detectives made an arrest. But but those those type things are hard to 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 strategize around. So we try to look at where are we having our shootings, where are we having our homicides, where are we having some of our robberies, and that's where we're trying to put some of those initiatives. And we know some neighborhoods that have seen some spikes that we focused on. So earlier in the year, uh, in January and February, we selected three neighborhoods this year that we would focus on all year long. And then we also selected three neighborhoods that we would focus on for the summer. And we're doing it, uh, not just all, it's not just all enforcement, right? It's, it's proactive, uh, it is surveillance, it is traffic enforcement, it is addressing blight and issues in the community, right? Picking up travel, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, but, but, but it's also about, that's also the same neighborhoods that we put a lot of our emphasis in with community events, community programs, and focusing on youth. So there, there's a balance of what we're trying to do. Um, it's one of the areas that we're focusing with the Boys and Girls Club, interacting with our youth, that's a big passion of mine. Uh, but to spend time with young people, to spend time in our residents, in our, in our communities, in our neighborhoods. Uh, so we had our first community uh, uh, event uh, last month in Central Precinct in the Trisha and Dresden Lane South Morrison area. That's the area that we're focused on in Central Precinct. Um, this, coming, uh, this coming Saturday, we will be in the north, and we'll be up around um, uh, the Boys and Girls Club up there. Uh, um, is, is it yeah Turnberry? But what I was trying to think of that neighborhood, um, but it it'll be drawing uh, drawing out a lot of, of uh, sp uh, stuff with kids. We'll have a lot of city resources in the area, Thorncliff, the Thorn Thorncliff neighborhood, Thorncliff area, and we'll be at that Boys and Girls Club uh, facility. So we'll have things outside, inside. We've got some great food. We've got a group that's going to come and uh, cook the food for us, stuff off the grill. 
some hamburgers and hot dogs, and they are fantastic, man. The, uh, the food's good, but the guys that are, that are doing it are also great. Um, but there will be a lot of city resources, uh, different city agencies there. Um, but just look forward to it. We'll be out there from like 10 to 2 and interacting with our community. We'll have the recruit class out there. Speaking of the recruits, uh, we have a class in uh, with 21 that will graduate uh, in August, towards the latter part of August, and then another class that will graduate in November. And we're hiring now for the class that will start in September. So I'm really excited uh, to have some opportunity, uh, new, new officers coming on board and join and joining this profession. Um, so then our last community day will be uh, in August. It'll be down south, and that'll be around the Marshall Courts area. That's the neighborhood that we've been focusing on there with the CNI and the revitalization of, of our southeast community. I mean, I'm really, really excited. And, and the resources come out. It's just a really good event. Um, parents friendly, uh, children youth friendly, and and then uh, we kind of tease each other and, and have some have some good time. So I'm really looking really looking forward to that. Uh, all right, let me get some of the questions. Uh, Hilbert, uh, things in the city. How does one apply for the department? So we keep uh, online. You can apply. We keep that open all the time. We're always hiring. Uh, but I will tell you, uh, if you have any trouble at all with logging in and doing anything uh, with it online, if you go to the city's website and look at positions, I police department. Be you can, Sarah's going to send you a link, but I will tell you, if you call us down here at headquarters, I will get a recruiter to call you, and we'll have a good conversation and get that ball rolling, and, and they um, they are fantastic. Uh, we've streamlined our process a lot. I think we have one of the best hiring uh, processes in the state, uh, if not in the country. We get a lot of departments across the country calling us, asking us how we how we do that. It's about 13 steps, but it's, it all goes on at the same time, right? So um, we're hiring for police officers. We're hiring for dispatchers. And uh, so if you're interested, um, please let us know. And, and like I said, Sarah can send you a link. We'll do that today. But if, if, if you have any problems at all with the system, just call and I'll get a recruiter to, to call you back directly and kind of walk you through the process. Um, that's a great question. Thank you. Uh, Prince, uh, hello from South Prince. Hope all, everything is well. Hope things are going over there okay across the water. Uh, it's good to hear from you. Thank you, my friend. Watching from Gloucester, but worked 30 years in Newport News, still shop there. Uh, so I'm assuming uh, the little shops or the mall are kind of all over. Uh, I hope everything is good in Gloucester. I've got some good friends up there. and uh, uh, Sheriff's a good man. I've, I've worked with him. We've had some interaction with him. Uh, I'd like to tease him, though, but uh, he's good people. And uh, I've got some uh, friends here in the department that have family in Gloucester, so I get to hear a lot, of, a lot about it. Been there a couple times for meetings. A great city. Uh, and uh, it's good to have you on board, Bethany. I appreciate you chiming in today. You can tell, tell the sheriff you saw me today and, and give him a hard time. Uh, Rachel, thanks for coming out to Port Warwick on Wednesday. I really appreciate it. Rachel, uh, so what Rachel's talking about is every Wednesday there's some bands out at Port Warwick. Um, uh, you get to interact. I've, I've got to go. I missed, I missed last week, uh, but the, the two before that, I got to interact with the crowd. The, uh, uh, was it Slap Slap Nation, I think, was out there. I saw the Navy band out there. I missed last week, um, but my intent is to try to get out there this evening. Uh, today's Wednesday, right? Tuesday. Today's Tuesday. Tomorrow evening. This yeah, tomorrow evening uh, to go out and, and it's really cool. Uh, I enjoyed just walking the circuit, walking around, uh, seeing seeing the kids that are out there, talking to them, families, just interacting, checking on them, and. Uh, Listening to some good music as well, right? I'm I'm pretty wide in my in my um, uh, discs and cassettes, right? I'm still old enough to have cassettes, but uh, but no, I, it's really good to see residents of Newport News and other individuals who come to our city uh, for the good music and just get out. You know, after the pandemic, it's so nice to get out and just be around other people and talk and interact. So, um, if kids are out there throwing a football, I may jump in those games. Uh, I see some some dogs out there that got uh, some crazy crazy uh, uh, colors right that are tie dyed fur and stuff, but uh, it's a really good event and the vendors around there are great and it's just people having a good time and I really enjoy that. So, uh, Rachel, I appreciate that, but I'll tell you, I I enjoy coming out and interacting with people as well. Uh, how long do you have to wait for your to receive a DUI? After you receive a DUI, so. You know, I, I want to know the, the particulars. Um, you know, we've looked at our, our hiring practices and, and different things. So I, I would like to know a little bit more about the whole situation when it happened. What was the court? What was the court ruling? The best way to answer that question is if you will call us, 
I'll get you hooked up with one of the recruiters and they can answer those things directly. But there were some things I would want to ask you. I don't want to do it here over, over live stream, but we can work around that. We can work with those things. You know, if it's, if it's five years, if it's two years, if it's, a, you know, it just do make sure we got a valid license and those type things, but it would just be some particulars. I don't want to ask you over the, over the live stream, but, but, um, if you'll let us know, um, send me a, send me a number and I'll have a recruiter call you today. We can make that, we can at least make that connection. Uh, uh, Teresa, good afternoon, chief. Thank you. And your officers. Well, Teresa, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I was just up talking to some officers upstairs and in, in, in a meeting we were in and I, I just wanted to share, spend a little bit of time with them, telling them how much I appreciate the work that they do in this city. This is a hard profession. They see a lot. They're away from their families a lot. It's, it's not Monday through Friday, nine to five, and we go home, right? It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, weekends, nights. And then when you work on days off, you may be in court and you stay late. Um, and it is, a, it is a very demanding profession, but I think that's what makes it so spectacular. I think that's what it makes it such a great, a great profession. Um, but I appreciate that, Teresa. It means a lot. And it means a lot to officers who, are, who, may, who uh, may be bored and, and watching this. Um, it means a lot to them, so thank you for that. Janet, um, hello from Berkeley Village Apartments. Janet, I'm glad you're on board. I'm glad you're here with us uh, this afternoon. Thank you very much. That means a lot. Thank you. Kim Kimberly, hi, Chief. Miss you guys. Come see, see me for lunch. I got a sandwich with your name on it. Kimberly, that's a, that's a bet. That sounds good. We'll have to do it. I, 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 I need to get back out there. It sounds great. Amy, we have to do something with the people on every corner begging for money. Explain it to my youngest why a guy was nodding nodding out on a sidewalk, standing up at a bit much. So it's funny, you, you uh, Amy, that you bring that up. I had that same conversation with the mayor. Uh, he came out to our community, our care walk after the homicide we had last Monday. And I want to get back to that question about um, uh, fireworks as well. So I'll try to hit both. Uh, individuals that are panhandling, right, they shouldn't be in the median on the street corner, and it can't be aggressive, right? They shouldn't be in the middle of the street uh they should stay on that on that corner so one for their safety and individual safety and then and approaching the streets you know i don't want them to get hit i don't want uh, someone to stop and get hit in in the rear and so i agree with you um a couple challenges we have is if individuals would pull over to the curb or park um, but if individuals are in the middle of the street and offer some type of currency it kind of lures them out into the street so it's it's some of the it's some of the individuals who provide, who give, and it's also the individuals on the street corner or that wander into the median. Uh, making arrest or charging, it becomes a, a court case, and if those individuals don't go to court, a capus is issued, and then there's an arrest made, and now we're putting those individuals in incarceration, and that's not what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is get to know those individuals, get a little bit of information, work with uh, our social services, human services, about what, what needs are there, are our uh, Four Oaks uh, Day Reporting Center about is there some training that we can get? Is there some job training? Are they looking for any ed type of education? Um, is it a, a, a some that, that might have some uh, physical disabilities or challenges, uh, some some mental challenges? Um, it's really trying to understand and address. But I, it, 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 the, the mayor and I had this exact same conversation. Um, and it's just it's just a big quagmire of, diff of different elements that, that put in. And when individuals and when individuals uh, pull over and have people come out or lure people out, maybe lure is not the right word, but when people come out and and allow or offer, it draws people into the street. So it creates you know when we talk to individuals, please don't get in the street. Well, they will say to us, well they were offering money and, and and I went in and then then it goes back and forth well if I go up and talk to someone at the window but it and it's just a lot to it um, so we're trying to address that in a social s sort of setting instead of a law enforcement setting I do know it sometimes there has to be you know you can only give so many warnings um, but I, I greatly appreciate that Amy if there's any particular area uh, that you're talking about if you could send that to me and I can have some officers kind of check that and if there's one particular area that you're focused on. I know that some of our major intersections is where we have some of the, the bigger issues, but there may be some place that you're that you've seen that's different. So just please let me know. We'll see what we can do with that. Uh, fireworks. I don't want to forget fire. So uh, actually had a, a very good conversation with the mayor, the city manager, several city councilmen about fireworks at our last the city council work session. Um, we talked a lot about that. One was there seemed to be much more this year than in years past, and and. 
I, I'm only speculating. I, I, I don't, but I know that we as a city did not have a fireworks display this year. Um, last year being in the pandemic, a lot of people weren't able to get out. We're just seeing restrictions lifted. Um, it's nice weather or much warmer weather, people coming out and fireworks being shot off. Now, if it was in one particular area of the city, we would be able to isolate that, but it, it was throughout the city. We heard them in the south, in the central, in the north, um, places that we didn't, don't even get many radio calls to. Um, and when you get there, if there's five or six people, it's hard to pinpoint who's the one that actually lit the firework and set it off. So we tried to talk to them, and, and we got several reports. Chief, they quit while, you, while the police were there, uh, but then when you drive off, uh, they would start lighting them again. So we talked about uh, some things to, uh, next year, maybe putting a bigger presence on the street at an earlier part of the day, um, that we just had uh, have individuals that could respond uh, to areas that we didn't take, didn't pull from the neighborhoods, and that we get the fire department more involved in, in what we're doing as well. So if we have firemen out there, police officers out there, uh, have the fire marshals out there responding to some things that it gives us a little bit better. Uh, you know, most people that I interact and talk to with were very uh, polite, but not too many would be the one in a group setting of 20 who's the one that set the firework off. And, and so it would become very challenging, and they would stop when the officers would roll through or stop and get out of the car and talk to people. But because there's still calls for service coming in, they got back in the car and left. 20 minutes later, we get another call about fireworks. So it was, I, I, under, I, I don't remember who asked that question, but it was, believe me, it was frustrating for us as well. And then uh, on the 4th of July, we had a, a, a young teenager that was struck by gunfire. And we also had a homicide, uh, not, too, not too much different in time frame. So that took a lot of officers away from some of the neighborhoods we wanted to be in to deal with those two issues. So uh, that's a very good point. It lets me know that you guys are really tuned in to what's going on. And uh, that, that's good things. Uh, I know that myself, Chief Johnson, the fire department, the mayor, several city councilmen have have talked about putting a more comprehensive plan, a better job, a better plan uh, together next year. One of that will be, for me, is for us having more officers on the street on the 4th of July, New Year's Eve, and uh, maybe having like our rear deck lights or flashlights. Um, at, you know, at, at 11, 10, 11 o'clock at night, an officer can be in a police car three blocks away and you can't really see them. But if I got those blue deck lights on that are flashing, not traffic stop lights, but just deck lights, uh, you can see those for almost a mile away. So it would give the perception of, of police in the area. So it's a couple of things we're looking at, uh, but there should be more to come. But I know uh, we see that 4th of July and New Year's Eve, we see a lot of those issues. That's a great, that was a great point. Jonathan, please comment on what's being done to make the roads safer. Aggressive driving at Hampton Roads is out of control. Uh, Jonathan, I will tell you, we, we have a traffic division, but I had to absorb some of that because of our shortages in patrol until I get some of the academy class out. I was uh, spent some time with Chief Grinstead, but we didn't want to just, we have not abandoned it. I don't, don't want to take it that way, but we're sending our, we send the traffic complaints to our traffic division and the precinct. Now we're sending it to the precinct and they're trying to address those when they have a little bit more free time. We did try to invest in some technology. We bought uh, three, not license plate readers, but uh, speed trailers. So they're mobile devices that we can put and, and, and set um, that will snap, uh, give a recording of how fast someone's going. And, and usually I can say that when those are out, there are officers around. Um, so we're trying to move those around to some of the locations that have had our high accident locations where we see speeding. We talked about doing some traffic checkpoints. Um, yes, um, and, and some public service announcements about safety, speeding. Um, you know, as we get back to school starting, we'll get back with those bus arm cameras out and kids getting on the bus and, and being out much earlier hours. Uh, so it's, it's but, but you're right. I, I, I actually have a folder upstairs on my desk about traffic complaints and speeding. And, and we keep a log of all those where they are. And, and we try to, you know, are we getting a lot in groups together? We've got a lot about uh, Hilton area. I've got a lot on Wickham Avenue. Uh, I get a lot uh, where we see some of our fatalities or pedestrians hit uh, up there on Jefferson Avenue. They're crossing from some of the apartments over to a uh, it food line, and they're not doing the crosswalks, right? They're darting across where it's a little bit darker. I've, I've had a couple of pedestrians hit already this year. Um, so th those are kind of some of the things that we're looking at. Um, we continue to try to focus on. My goal is to get that traffic division back out there and let them focus on those. But right now, until I get that academy out, I've got to kind of focus on some shortages that I have in, in the in the precincts. I'll make sure we have those calls for service answered and responded to. 
Uh, and and thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, all these arrests or are these arrests or convictions? Miss um, Hurst, help me help me help me with that question. I'm I'm reading it. Are are these arrests or convictions? Um, help. What what are we referring to? Or was it the panhandling or fireworks or something else? Um, and I know I'm a little bit behind because I was. Um, so help me just a little bit with that. Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer, how are you? It's good to have you here. William, good afternoon. <laughs> Please happy birthday to your officer Rand from from New Jersey <laughs> from New Jersey's mom. William, thank you very much for being here, my friend. I appreciate that. That's that's good. Uh, Angie, do something about all the driving and texting people are causing accidents or at least creating hazards. Angie, we're working on it. You know, it's hard to be everywhere. I, I will tell you, we, we're authorized 465 officers. I think we should be at about 500 in this department with the calls for service and the issues we do. Uh, but I hear you. Um, it's, you know, when we have some of those bad accidents and I read the reports about what caused it, you're absolutely right. Um, texting is, is, is a big issue. We try to address as much as we can, but we can't be everywhere. But that's, a, that's, a, that's very true. We need, you know, what we need is a big billboard around several intersections of the city and, and, and highlight that, right? It's a great point. Anna, hi, Chief. Have a good day. Thank you for your, Anna, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, I think this is a great idea. Transparency is key. Well, okay. Thank you so much, Mr. I appreciate that. I agree. I agree. Uh, Bethany, I love your officers support the dogs at the shelter. Yeah, they do the, they do the, <laughs> they do the best they can. And, uh, you know, the, um, the tail wagon Tuesdays, I'm, I'm guessing that's what you're referring to. Uh, we're a big component of that, proponent of that, I guess. And um, sometimes the officers get to fight over, like they argue back and forth. No, I want, you know, I want this type of dog. I want this type of cat. And I'm going this week. I'm going next week. I've been holding out for a, a bulldog or a boxer. They keep looking for me one. Um, I'm really, I'm really, you know, if they get one of those. You may not get me away. Uh, I like those those big uh, bulldogs that like walk like five feet and then fall over on their side and just and snore and lay down. Right, that I like that. But uh, they keep looking for me. I said that's what I'm holding out for. But uh, it is fun for us to interact with the the, the shelter there and animals that need a home and and just give the officers a little bit of time to to, to go back and forth to that. I think that's important. Uh, Sherry, how are you? It's good to have you here today. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's good to see you. Good to talk to you. Uh, going to watch the Reds play this weekend. Oh, Sherry, you're killing me. Uh, yeah, so that's where uh, you're talking about Cincinnati Reds baseball. That's that's where my where I'm from. My family's there. My dad's a big Reds fan, and he calls me and gives me all the scores and the the highlights. It's like listening to uh, Marty and Joe when I was a kid uh, at, at, at the Reds games, the announcers. But uh, yeah, I uh, I try to see him as much on TV as I can, but not too much. But I do get to play by play for my dad a lot. A lot. Uh, okay, uh, can you address the car accidents in Hilton Village into a house and yards? The city has not addressed the issue. The city has not addressed the issue. Miss um, Miller, help me. Uh, was there like some damage that hasn't been addressed yet, or I, I don't want to speak. You know, I know that I've got some speeding complaints from Hilton. I know that there was an accident there where uh, a house was struck, but I, I don't. I want to make sure I know exactly what ones you're talking about. If you Send me a message or, or uh, shoot us a call. Uh, I, I kind of get back with you on that. Just just follow up. But I know I've got some complaints about speeding in Hilton. I touch. I was talking about that a little earlier, and I, I know of one uh, car accident that a car that that struck a house there. But I don't know if that's the same thing we're talking about. Monique, uh, uh, hi Chief. I truly love how you, how you so into the community, and I really love seeing you at Port Warwick and tossing that football. Monique, thank you very much. I have a um, I look. I, Probably the, the best thing that I like about this job is interacting with people and getting to, to see and meet and, and talk with other people. Uh, the hardest part for me of this job is technology, right? Touching things and how do I make the phone shut off? How do I turn things on? That's why I got all these smart people around me. But I enjoy being out at Port Warwick. I enjoy, you know, every Friday I go on a, a, a you know, precincts have community walks and I'll join them. But every Friday, I try to pick a neighborhood where I where I call a chief walk, where I just go walk in the neighborhood, right? It drives my assistant crazy. Like, chief, we could put this meeting here. I'm like, no, 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 no. Keep my Fridays free. So 3, 30, 4 o'clock, I like to just go, whether it's Marshall Courts, Randolph neighborhood, South Morrison, uh, up around Aqueduct. I've walked up there, uh, Beachmont, uh, uh, Ridley Circle. 
uh, haven't, I really want to get over and walk on uh, Ivy Maple Maple area, uh, certainly by the water, right? We've done some community cleanups over that way. Uh, but I tried to get out and just walk a little bit on Friday. One, I get my steps in. And two, um, I just see see the neighborhoods and see our community. And if people, I don't do it to, to, to bother people or go up and knock on doors. And um, But it's just if people want to come out and talk to me and walk with me, that's great. Uh, and if they don't, I understand. Um, but it just allows me to get out and interact in our community. And whether you see a young man or a little girl on a bicycle, I even got to, um, I think it's called a hoverboard. I got to try that. Uh, a couple weeks ago, it was embarrassing, uh, and an eight-year-old little girl was telling me how to do it. And uh, let me tell you, when I put the thing on the grass, it was much easier. But uh, uh, we had a good time, and I, I enjoy those things. So thank you, thank you, uh, Evelyn. Appreciate all you guys do to protect this, Evelyn. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Chris. We have so many speeders on New Newport Avenue. We've asked to have radar run at least four times and have not seen any. Can you please set something up? Chris, so we talked a little bit about that earlier on traffic. Um, I've kind of got to look at what resources I have. So we really try to narrow down time frames and days. I've had to absorb uh, some of the traffic officers in to make sure that we have enough in our roll calls. I'm, I have a standard or a set number of officers that I want on a shift for safety. So we used to spend this, we used to spend, we used to send the speeding complaints to our traffic division. But six or eight officers that folk that's what they focused on but have had to absorb that right now with some shortages we've had so now we're sending it to the precinct captains we're trying to do the best we can with it um we're going to focus on where we have some of our higher accidents and pedestrians um but uh, newport avenue we can we can take a look at that maybe we can get that speed speed trailer over there and get it set up um, i just got to kind of look at the data about about where we're at and then touch base we also can do some overtime initiatives, maybe some traffic overtime initiatives in areas. So, um, uh, Chris, if you can give me like an idea of, of on Newport Avenue um, time frame, early in the morning, afternoon, the evening, all hours of the day, um, just what you think would be the best uh, uh, for us out there, and I can look at some data as well. But I'll see what we can do. Okay, I appreciate that, uh, Sean. Sean, I. I it, it certainly seems like that at times. It, it, it is a tough job, and it is very demanding. Officers see a lot, but I'm telling you, it's extremely rewarding to be able to help people, to interact with people. You know, when, when you dial 911, you know, the officers are going to be there. And, and, and I, I believe wholeheartedly in my heart that that's what most of us join this career for. It's not to get rich. Trust me. It's, uh, it's to interact and help people and give back. Um, so I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Gary, very grateful for the the new. So Gary, I'm assuming that means Newport, right? If you're talking about Newman Police Department, but I'm I'm guessing that's Newport, and uh, I appreciate you too, man. Thank you very much. Uh, Toya, hey, it's good to see you. I've uh, been doing good, just working, and I hope I hope you're doing well. Uh, I can't believe we're gosh, we're halfway over halfway through the summer now. School will be starting soon, and. It's just crazy. It's like it's just flying by. We just had Thanksgiving dinner like last weekend. It's crazy, but it's good to see you. Thank you. Uh, more. Hello, Chief. How many recruits are you all trying to bring in for the September Academy? Uh, my last, my last look is somewhere between twenty and thirty. I bet we will because of what we can manage. I'm going to guess about twenty-five, uh, but probably probably twenty-five recruits. I think we've hired nine, uh, and we have a lot of interviews coming up. Uh, we have a great HR department here in the city. Uh, but we'll probably be at 29. I, I, I've got a class in now of 21, a class right behind that of 22. I'm probably looking at 25 in September. And then uh, we're already fighting upstairs about when the next class is. I'm, I'd like to see it in January. Uh, but we'll see, but I'm, I'm, I'm pushing for that. Even if it's 15, 12, or 15 officers in January, we've got to stay ahead of the game. I don't want us to get short and have vacancies. And look, we have things with People have families and new additions to their families. We have um, people on, that are injured, that get injured in this profession. Uh, military leave, we have a lot of individuals that are still uh, do, do work with the military and reserves or whatever it might be. Uh, so I need to make sure that we keep our staffing where we need to be. We have people that retire, we have people that come to this job and, and you know, when I started, I knew, hey, I'm gonna do this job for 25 years. And so 28 years, almost 29 years later, I'm still doing this. Some people come to this profession after a year and some things they see and experience is totally understandable. Hey, this isn't for me. 
or some that, hey, you know, I, I don't want to work a midnight shift. I don't want to have to come to work on my days off or get called in. So we have people that we train, but it takes about a year uh, to get through field train, uh, to get through the academy and then field training. It's a long, it's a long process. So we have to make investment in people. So we hate to lose people, um, but we try to put people the best place we can to do, do what we need to serve the city. And, and then we try to use technology to be a force multiplier. Uh, so that, yeah, so to answer your question, probably 25 in the class in September. Uh, sorry, I was talking about the average you discussed earlier. Uh, were those numbers arrests or convictions? The average, about the averages. Um, averages of, so if it's talking about crime, if we're talking about crime, uh, the percentage of decrease we are this year compared to last year is 11%. There is a national average for clearance rates, which means arrest. So let's take robbery, rape, um, homicide, uh, uh, burglaries, larcenies. There's a national average set by the uh, FBI. And they take that average collectively from all the departments across the country, not just Virginia, across the country. Um, and, and we report our numbers to the state and then the state reports all that to the FBI, right? And they and they come out with the, the clearance rates. Uh, I will tell you, we are above the national average in every every clearance K, K classification except larceny, and we're we're down there by like one percent. We're well above the national average, 62, 63 percent for homicide. We're almost at a 76 percent uh, uh, closure rate on our on our homicides. Uh, we're above the national average on aggravated assaults, above in robberies, above in burglaries, well above the national average in rapes. Most of those are by individuals that we know or that are known. So so our clearance, it's important for me, there's two categories, maybe three. One is if we have a crime, that we solve it. Two, that we're doing the best thing we can to reduce crime, and that we have strategies in place to prevent crime, right? Uh, uh, whether it's interacting with youth, whether it's traffic enforcement, whether it's uh, uh, surveillances, whether it is focusing on gang activity or drug activity or technology with ShotSpotter. Uh, and I don't just, hey, this is, the, this is the initiative we're going to use, this strategy. It is all of these different strategies that come together. The same areas that we have heavy enforcement, we're seeing a lot of violence. It's the same areas that we're going to do a lot of uh, community programs with our youth and interact with our citizens. I think. I think it's important to have that that balance there. Uh, CPA number forty-seven, uh, Miss Ashton, it's good to have you on board. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for thanks for all that you do and, and taking part in those programs. Mark, the south end of Warwick Boulevard is turning into the Warwick's drag strip. We recently, in the last year, had a single car fatality about Fifty Fourth Street because of high speed. Can there be more attention to this area? Mark, I will tell you. I will put that on our list to look at. Um, like I said, I, I don't know if you caught earlier, I've got a list, a folder in my office about uh, traffic complaints. So we're trying to address those. Um, it, it, it's, you know, it, it's, it, it's surprising to me how many complaints we're starting to see. And I don't know if that's because people have not been on the road so much in the pandemic, but really the last, I'd be interested, Mark, like when have you seen it pick up? But really the last three months, probably the biggest complaint we're starting to get is about a speeding uh, on Warwick and Jefferson, and some of the side streets, but Warwick and Jefferson a bit. So I'd be, but I've really seen it really pick up, um, uh, really in the last three months. So I don't know if it's we're just seeing it or if more people are reporting it. Um, we've got some speed trailers that we can deploy, so I'll, we'll take a look at that. Keith, hope all is well, my friend. Good to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do too. I appreciate that. Todd, what are you doing to retain officers when Virginia Beach is offering five thousand sonas? signing bonus and officers get credit for years they served with other agencies it's a good question todd i will tell you uh, when i saw um, some of the agencies around us increasing their starting salary uh, we're about two thousand dollars difference between uh, virginia beach and norfolk now both of those cities are 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 larger than us their departments are about twice our size uh, i i'm estimating i think they're around 850 900 uh, authorized we're at 465 now i do believe that with the calls for service and things that we're doing, that this department should be about 500. That that's where I would like to sit to see the city have us within the next five years is about a 500-man police department. Uh, but when I look at at 
uh, there's you know there's there's some departments may offer here's a five thousand dollar signing bonus. Um, our department is very big on take home vehicles. That can be a twelve to fifteen thousand dollar bump depending on how you look at that. Uh, I guess if you live right across the precinct, it's not that big. But if you live twenty miles away, then it becomes a, a, a benefit. Uh, we have a, an excellent um, uh, buying and supporting individuals who go. Uh, we'll pay a portion of your college. Uh, as long as you maintain a C or above average, well, the city will pay a portion of, of, of college, whether it's a, a, a two-year degree, a four-year degree, or, or a master's degree. The city will, will pay part of that. We have an excellent benefit package here. And like I said, um, North, uh, what do you say, Virginia Beach, is, is their starting salary, I think, is at 51. And we're bringing, once you get out of the academy here, you're making 48.8. So it's about, what, 2,200 different um, so I think we're very compatible. Um, we have about, we're about, when I say we're having about 25 people in the academy, that's about our vacancies right now, what I anticipate them being uh, at the start of September. Uh, some people have left the department and, and some retirements. Uh, but I've also got 21 in the, the academy now and another 22 in the, in the second academy. So we're running them, we stagger them, right? Um, but if you think about that, if we're down about 20, 25 officers right now, and I've got another 42, 43 in the academy. That's 67 officers altogether that aren't on the street answering calls. That aren't can't respond to traffic complaints. So, so some of them are tied up in training. Now we'll be good once those classes graduate, but people continue to retire. People come to departments and leave. So that's why I want to make sure that we stay focused on bringing people in. But I think our our package here, employment, the benefits, take home vehicles, uh, paying for college, uh, and like I said, it's about a two thousand dollar difference in salary, uh, but a take on vehicle, you know, that some people may look at that as twelve or fifteen thousand dollar benefit. Um, so it's really depend on what you want and what you look at and what each department has to offer. Um, but I would put up I would put our department up against any department in the state. Um, culture that we have here, the different options that we have here, um, yeah, I, I I think this is a great place to a great place to if you're gonna be in law enforcement, I think it's a great place to be. I will tell you that we focus heavily on technology. Uh, just until last week, we were the only department in the state that had um, ShotSpotter. Uh, one, or, one or two now have adopted that. Um, there's a couple, we were one of the first departments, if not the first, to have every officer have body-worn cameras. Um, and we are spending a lot of money this year on technology, um, whether it's, it's phones and, and new uh, devices that help us solve crime, break into to different things, encrypted messages, uh, economic crimes, survey, uh, cyber security type crimes. Uh, we're spending a lot of money on, on technology, uh, fingerprints, um, uh, uh, Faro system about how you reconstruct a crime scene uh, through digital. Uh, it's just it, we're spending a lot of a lot of time addressing that. There's so much technology advances so quickly, so we're trying to use that also as a false false force multiplier. So I hope, Todd, I hope that hit some of the points you were asking about. Uh, Ms. Kelly, when when you're going to have a walk around Meadowview Townhomes area, I will put it on the list. Um, sounds good, Meadow Meadowview Townhomes. That sounds good. We could do that. Keith, uh, hoverboards are not meant to go on the grass. Yeah, Keith, I know that. But when I had it on the concrete, I kept falling off. So you were seeing an eight-year-old little girl catch me as I fell. So I put it on the grass. And it was much more stable. It didn't move quite as fast. But I was able to hold my balance. But thank you for pointing that out to everybody watching, Keith. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, Tina, if everyone would stop giving them money, maybe it would stop. Yeah, yeah, Tina. You know, and that's that's some of the struggle I have. Is I, I people are in need. Uh, there's people who don't have. Uh, or if they just did it safely. Um, but but you're right. When vehicles stop and roll down a window, sometimes they're going really really slow and they dart out into traffic to. To get whatever is being offered, and then yeah, so it's it's the way it's done. I think that most people complain about, or concerned about, or frustrated about safety-wise. Uh, but I I hear you. I hear you, Kaylee. Um, we don't have that protect. We don't have we don't have protection from cars on Warwick Boulevard. No guardrails or concrete banners like outside the, of the precinct. We have tried to fight for protection against the drivers who are. Oh, I see. This is going back to what has the city done? I, I see where. You, uh, there were two crashes in one week just a couple weeks ago, one into a home I, that was vacant. That's right. I know about that one. And the other was next door where it was 
uh, Merriman for hitting, hitting the home. We were truly worried about our neighbors and ourselves living across the street uh, from these events. It's horrifying. Ke Kaylee, I totally understand. I appreciate you sharing that with me. I, yeah, I knew about the one. I wasn't sure about the other. I knew about the vacant home. Um, oh, okay. So, Chris, thank you for that. That, hel that helps me kind of bottle the edges a little bit on time frame. So, in the evening hours, late afternoon, 4 to 6, early evening. Got it. We, we have a lot of speeders on Orcutt and Hilton. Okay. Thank you, Brenda. Um, and do you feel that no death penalty in Virginia is playing a part in the rise of crime, especially in Hampton Roads? No death penalty. You know, uh, my, it, it, it's a question about violent crime. You know, I'm, I'm seeing it here in Hampton Roads. I'm seeing it in other parts of our state and really around the country. I see some of the numbers that come out of, you know, we're nowhere near the size of Chicago, but I, I see the number of shootings. Uh, that, that happened there just over the long weekends in some of our, our large cities. Um, uh, and I, I look at, at, you know, right now we're down in shootings, but our homicides are up. Uh, there's a meeting, I think it's next week in Norfolk, where the seven, seven cities, so if I get them right, Suffolk, Hampton, Newport News, Portsmouth, Virginia Beach, Norfolk, am I missing one? Chesapeake. And Chesapeake are getting together, the Chiefs are getting together, uh, to talk about some of the issues going on with violent crime, what we're seeing, what we can do. I have a lot of different entities um, reach out and ask me, you know, what can we do to help? Uh, the NAACP has asked for a meeting that we're going to sit down, and myself, the president, and members of the NAACP here in Newport News, Pastor Maxwell, and talk a little bit about what we can do. I think being vigilant, reporting things that you see, being good witnesses is, is, is key. Um, if we see apartments and locations that are starting to have a lot of traffic and two, three in the morning, or uh, individuals that we see with, with firearms to report that, to let us address it. It's not mean that they're doing anything wrong, but that we could just check into that. Um, I think there's a lot of factors that we're seeing. Um, uh, I, I just looked at the number of guns that we took off the street last year compared to guns we've taken off the street this year. There's some different laws in effect that, that have some, some play in that. And so I think it's a lot of issues. I think it is issues with condensed poverty. I think there's issues with frustration. I think there's issues with lack of opportunity. Uh, I think there's issues with individuals that want to hurt other people. I think there can be uh, gang violence. I think it's issues with um, uh, family issues and, and domestic, certainly domestic related issues. Um, I think there's a lot of those things. And then the pandemic having everybody uh, cooped up and now getting back out and, and just, uh, I, I think all of those things, I don't, I hope in our meeting, you know, I don't think that, that anyone will say, you know, guns coming into to, to some of these communities where we're seeing uh, upticks in violence. Uh, I, I don't know that there's one, hey, this is what's leading to it, death penalty, reduction in bail, all these things that people talk about, um, backload and, and backlog in court cases. Uh, I don't know that there's just one solution. I think it's, a, 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 it's like a puzzle. And, and each one has a piece to kind of put it together and then actually look at what it is. I think that moving forward, we have to identify what each entity can do. And, it, and if, if the solution is policing, and that's the only solution we put on the table, I, I, I don't think we can succeed that way, right? I think it has to be education, our schools. I think it has to be human services or social services. I think it has to be law enforcement. Um, I think libraries play a role. Uh, blight, I think, plays a role. You know, if we, if a neighborhood looks bad and we leave it look bad and the city doesn't clean it and, and individuals who live in that community don't take a role in cleaning it, if we're not reporting things or we're not telling things that happen, uh, I'm not saying stand out with a sign and saying this individual did this, but I'm uh, calling and reporting it so we can investigate it. I think there's a whole lot of things that play into that and there's a whole, so there's a lot of uh, pieces to the puzzle in my opinion, uh, but I also think there's a lot of solutions that different people, different agencies, different entities can bring to the table. We just got to get them hooked up, right? We got to get them hooked up. Uh, we talked, I saw some reports about, you know, mentoring youth and focusing on youth at an earlier age. And I think Boys and Girls Club, the YMCA just do a great job. Um, but I need to see more than just, it can't just be law enforcement. And I'm certainly not saying that other agencies aren't doing anything. I just think there has to be a push. I think public safety is all, all of our, all of us play a role and the safety of our community and our neighborhoods, and um, just need to make sure that everybody's contributing. Um, 
Ford, when public school starts in September, will each high school have their own SRO? Thank you for all you in the department. So uh, Ford, that's our goal, is to have every high school in our city and every middle school. Uh, right now, I, we were having that part of that conversation upstairs was about how we will look on staffing. Um, it is my intent to have everyone. Now, as we went towards the end of the year, we had a couple officers doing some double duty, maybe spending a half a day at this school and a half a day at the next. I don't want to rule that out. My intent is to have the schools covered, but I've got some challenges right now. But we'll, I'll tell you this, at the end of the day, we kind of find a way to make it happen. We may have to do some overtime uh, here and there, but we'll, we'll find a way to make it happen. The youth of this city are very important to me. I have a passion for youth. Um, and I care about them. Man, I, I just think they're some of the most talented people. Uh, I enjoy being around them. Um, you know, they make fun of me because I don't know all the all the latest with the Facebook and hip Instagram, TikToks, and all that. But um, man, I I really you know I went to I missed one of of the six high school graduations. I really enjoy being there. Uh, I enjoy talking with young people. You all keep me young, right? Um, but in any event that you see us do in this police department, whether it's a promotion ceremony, an award ceremony. National Night Out, um, we should talk about that in a minute. Uh, uh, our police memorial, uh, academy graduation, there's always a youth involved. I always have a guest speaker who is a young person. I just think, you know, it, uh, we, we have a young adult police commissioner program. We have a freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior from every high school. That'll start in September. Uh, we, sit th we work together for about three hours on Wednesdays. Um, we have real discussions about diversity, about what your city should look like, about what you want from your police department. We talk about, uh, we, we put on the beer goggles and let you drive a golf cart around headquarters and put up cones and everybody thinks they can do it. You guys knock down everything that's out there. Uh, we put you on the police boat, let you go out on the water. Um, I take you to city council meetings, have you address the mayor, have you talk to our recruit class, have you uh, be the host of, of open forums with youth about our police department and have a panel and, and you guys kind of do the hold the uh, uh, the question and answer, if you will. Um, but I just think that it's important to have have you logged in. Uh, we take a week and do a youth academy. Uh, Miss Miss Monica White does a phenomenal job. Her and Miranda Eccles about uh, exposing this department, uh, what our practices and procedures are to youth. I think that's important. So we talk about all the things we're doing in police and reimagining it. I think we're ahead of the game. Uh, we certainly have a long way to go, and I think that we can always do better and more. Uh, but uh, I, I look at what we're doing, and, and uh, there's a couple other departments that have called us and like to come down and see what we're doing. So I'm excited about that. But for your answer about the schools, it's certainly my intent. Speed trailers don't work because they see the trailer and they go slow. As soon as the trailer is gone, they speed again. Well, Chris, I understand, but they might do the same thing with a police car, right? They might see the police car and slow down the speed. Uh, so we have to try all options. I'm not going to put all the eggs in one basket. Uh, I do think speed trailers have an effect. Uh, I know that a couple locations that we've gotten complaints on, we put speed trailers out there and I haven't heard complaints in two weeks. So um, I understand your frustration, my friend, I do, uh, but it, it is a tool that I'm gonna use. It may not be the best or most effective in some neighborhoods. It may work better than, than in others, uh, but I, I have found them to, that they do have some benefit. Uh, we always, there's also some, uh, we have a couple part, locations in the city that do red light cameras. Um, some speed trailers can capture images with speed, uh, so there's some different things we're looking at of technology, but I, I, I understand your frustration. Uh, Lawrence, hey Chief, hope Lawrence, I appreciate that. Good to have you here. Thank you. I'm doing well. Thank you. Been through a few weeks up here in Richmond. Ryko Sheriff's Office lost a sergeant to cancer. I saw that. Uh, yeah, I saw. Um, yes, sir, I did. Uh, Keith, I saw both of those. Um, you know, it, it, in the profession that we're in, you know, you, you become so close to the people you work with and and uh, we, we got to stop a minute, take a step back and remember that we're all human and that no one is promised tomorrow and life is short and to take the most of each day and, and, and value people we work with, we interact with and it's hard to lose someone that, that does this profession because we know how demanding it is and it's really living a life of sacrifice. So I saw both of those, it, it, it's very heartbreaking. Uh, Cameron chief when are you going to make it Cameron I I'm not even sure what that is man uh, I, I don't have any moves my friend maybe 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 you can work with me I'll tell you what you can put on you put on the, the you, can, you can have this badge and in the hat and you you do it and maybe you'll pass from me uh, 
but uh, but I, I appreciate you calling me out on on social media, Cameron. Thank you, Lynn. Lynn uh, when will you close the Courtney Dreyer case? Uh, so Lynn, all I can tell you is we continue to work on it. Um, you know, I, I, I can't get into particulars, uh, in, in certainly in this venue, but I, I can just tell you that every case stays open until we, we bring it to a conclusion and, and yeah, I understand. Uh, Jennifer, Newport News posted a Facebook live last week about a man that was wanted has he been arrested yet? Jennifer, uh, there was a couple, if it's uh, a homicide suspect or an individual that was in a domestic situation where he assaulted an elderly man and, and he really he really hurt that guy. He really hurt that man. Uh, he has not been located yet. Uh, I'm not sure he's still in the area, but um, uh, the, those are, are two individuals that we posted we're looking at. I don't know if those are the ones that you're talking about. Uh, but those are the two right now that I get a briefing on just about every day. What's the latest? What's the update? Um, one domestically where he, he just really, really hurt that, that man in his 80s and the other one from uh, uh, the homicide that we had last Monday. Uh, Mandy, how many CIT officers do you have at this time? I would say we're probably about 30%. Uh, we have a mandate to have all of our officers trained in bias-based policing and CIT uh, by the end of the year. I'm sorry, by the end of next year, um, we brought in, uh, we were having some really some trouble getting into classes and we can send five officers here and you know, that's tough. So in both, we went out and went, finally have officers in our department who can do the training. Each academy gets that now before they graduate. So, uh, you know what, we may, we may be approaching about 50% because I know the last couple academies have had that. And if academy's got uh, 20 people, less two or three, that's 60 and the department is, is 465, so 10%, you know, we're, we're, we're above that. We already had about eight. So we're, we're probably approaching maybe 40, 50%. Um, but I think the CIT program is great. Um, and we also partner with officers um, uh, from other jurisdictions as well that, that we work together on that. But that's a, that may, that's a great question. Um, M Mindy, I'm sorry, that's a great question. Did I catch everybody, Sarah? Did I miss anybody? I don't want anybody mad that... I wasn't trying to dodge anything. I, I hope I got it. Um, we talked about a community event coming up on Saturday in, in the North North Precinct. We'll be up there at the Boys and Girls Club on uh, Thorn, Thorncliffe. Um, like I said, we talked about the Academy that's getting ready to graduate. National Night Out uh, coming up in August. I'm excited about that. Now, um, uh, and and we are planning a September, uh, you know, September 11th, uh, uh, service, a memorial service. Uh, Captain Tejans is kind of taking the lead on that with the fire department, working that out. I think it's important that we recognize the men and women, remember the men and women who, who gave their lives on that fateful day and, and, and how it impacted so many in our country. It was kind of like time stopped, you know, in, in those towers. Uh, but we, we will have that, some version of that. Um, and we will have our police memorial for officers who have lost their lives in the line of duty in this department. We'll, have, we'll do, be doing that in October. Uh, so, so those events, I think, are important to, to stay focused on and remember the people that gave the ultimate the ultimate sacrifice. So I um, there's a lot going on as we go through this summer, and then we start back into school and looking forward to seeing football get back up and running and, and being out at Todd Stadium and interact with the teams and the kids there and uh, the talent that they have. Um, and I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm really thankful to the officers who choose to come and work in this department. We don't get it right all the time. We make mistakes. And I think we can be, uh, I think we have to own that and admit that we make mistakes. Uh, it's okay for that. Um, I think as long as we have our heart and our mind lined up in the right, trying to do the right thing to help people um, make things better, make the Newport News the best it can be, a place to, to live and raise a family, to work here. Um, and just, I, I do believe that our youth are some of the most talented. I, I cannot be more impressed with the work that the officers are doing. Um, I think this is a very progressive department. Um, appreciate all the dispatchers. We're, you know, this time last year we were about half strength, and now we're uh, we're only one or two short there. Uh, that is fantastic. Uh, we made that a number one priority last year is to staff that facility the way it should be. Um, our our uh, employees here uh, that do the background, our civilian workers that do so much in the background that. I don't get to interact with nearly enough and tell them how much I appreciate them and, and how well they do. Um, got good relationships with our 
continue to work with our Commonwealth Attorney's Office and our Sheriff's Department and, and things that we're trying to do to serve the, the citizens, right, of, of, of this city. Uh, Jamie, how's the investigation going with the, with that young man that attacked the older gentleman that abducted the lady on jail? Yeah, that, Jamie, that's the case we we're talking about. I was talking about with the individual we put out that was wanted. Uh, we're still looking for that individual. Uh, we had some information that he had left the area, but I'm not so sure that he's not back in the area now. Um, but yeah, that, that's an individual that, that uh, he, he severely beat, beat that elderly, elderly, elderly gentleman. I was able to call and talk to that elderly, elderly gentleman, and uh, I will tell you, I apologized to him for what had happened, what he had went through, and we were about, we were probably three minutes into that conversation, and he broke down crying, and I'm telling you, man, that touched me, and uh, we need to get the individual off the street that did that, but it, but it, it impacted me just hearing that man break down. Um, yeah. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate that. Uh, Willie, thank you for being such a great example. Oh, wow. Uh, William, thank you, my friend. I, 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 don't, I don't know about great example. I, I made plenty of mistakes, but I will tell you this. Um, the way I was raised, you know, my mom was a, a school teacher in, in, in Cincinnati for about 30 years, and, and she still talks to me like I'm in the third grade. Uh, and my father uh, was uh, was in the Marine Corps. He spent some time in Vietnam, uh, and then he worked at a paper company in in Cincinnati. They're both retired now and join the retirement life. And they do a lot of interaction with their church. Uh, but that they they raised me to value people, and and um, I played uh, a lot of sports. Baseball was my favorite growing up, and even into college. And uh, you know that everybody has to work together to make things get across. Uh, you know, all people have value. Um, Dr. Lyons a a, a very confident of mine that we talk about leadership and about community and, and talks to me all the time about regardless of the situation, how we treat people and how we communicate, right, sets the tone for so much. And I, I, I value conversation over confrontation anytime. Uh, it may take a little bit to get people to the table and people don't have to agree, right? I, I, I look at things differently than others and I'm sure others look at things very differently than I do. Um, but just to value each other enough to sit down and have conversation, I think that's how we move forward. I don't think it is all or nothing. I don't think it is black and white, left or right. I, I think that there is a lot of area in the middle uh, where we can compromise on and move forward and make things happen. We don't polarize each other, and and uh, and, and I guess that's 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 my hope. Um, I try to run this department like a family. We don't always agree, um, but but my intent. My intent is, is to make this the most progressive, uh, the best department that I can. And, and I'll tell you, I fall short in a lot of areas, but I continue to try to do better. So I appreciate that. Um, Jamie, yeah, Jamie, thank you a lot. I No, I totally get it. Thank you. And Miss Nelson, um, so Angel, um, yes, yeah, so I still hold a grudge against you for leaving us high and dry down there. And in, in, now is it Louisiana or Louisiana? Um, but I was reading some stuff uh, uh, about Baton Rouge and, and uh, New Orleans just the other day. And, and um, I'll tell you, our partnership with the Boys and Girls Club is still going strong. Uh, you would have been impressed. I was out there playing kickball the other day in uniform, right, with the Boys and Girls Club. And uh, made a couple catches out there. I, 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 I made a couple. I skied up and got a couple outs. Um, but, uh, no, I hope everything is going well well for you down there and thank you for everything you did here. We, we certainly laid the groundwork for the relationship that we have with the Boys and Girls Club as we move forward with Hal and, and Rob and um, you know I, I'm, I'm anxious anxious to get back up and rolling. You know we're playing we're doing kickball and, and some basketball nights and I want to get that league back going. Uh, it was just really fun and, and you know you were instrumental in getting that started. Uh, those three seasons that we had were great and uh, making sure that we didn't leave out girls either. You know, I was, you were a big part of that. And I appreciate everything that you did for this department, helping, helping out with the uh, promotion ceremonies, right. And, and, and uh, working us with the, uh, letting us be a part of uh, boys and girls club and all the kids and stuff. So I uh, hope, hope all is well. I uh, haven't talked to, to chief Randall or chief Hudgens in a while. Chief Randall well, used to be an assistant chief here. He's down in Pensacola. Uh, and Chief Hudgens is now the chief down in uh, Pineville, North Carolina. But I will tell you, I will tell you, uh, I don't know, Angel, if you'd heard this story, but uh, 
uh, Chief Randall sent me a picture a couple weeks ago, and he had this big box, right? He had this big box, and he's ripping open this cardboard box, and inside it, and guess what? Guess what it is? That's right. All the flack he gave me about having a big dry erase board and markers everywhere, he got himself a dry erase board, and I know Chief Hudgens has one in his office, too. I just gave away their secrets. Uh, they used to tease me, and they've got one themselves, right? We're all visual, so uh, that's great. Miriam, I was hoping you can be have more patrols on Boxley Boulevard. There is speeding, aggressive driving in the road. It's very scary between the hours of three, three and six p.m. Yeah, that that time frame concerns me because you know that that we're talking about kids getting home from school and stuff and elementary kids. So um, yeah, yes, ma'am, Miriam, we'll take a look at that. Liz, thank you for being here. Appreciate you're on board. Um, thank you for going through the Citizens Academy. We'll be reaching out to you. Uh, I think, matter of fact, you might be on our next Use of Force Review Board. Um, I, I think I saw that. I saw the list today, so I think think you might be. So I'm, I'm glad we got some 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 uh, more individuals that can that can do that. So thank you, um, Carrie. Uh, Carrie, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, thank you for all the stuff that you're doing in the community, uh, not only through your activism, but um, helping us also with uh, promotions and stuff that we do here, and and talking about how we do how we build better relations with the community. I know we've had a lot of conversations, and uh, I just appreciate everything that you're doing. Uh, in your voice out there and, and, and things that you've done over the years it's, it's meant a lot and I really appreciate that. Jamie, um, wonderful job with the protection you guys gave to him. It happened to be present, so great. Thank you for protecting him. Yeah, Jamie, I'll, I'll tell you that that there's been a couple cases here that have really hit me and, and just talking to that, that man on the phone and when I saw the photographs it was um, yeah. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate that. Well, look, so, so Sarah, I've made up for the time I was late, right? Uh, sorry to hold you all over. I know that other people, you have a lot better things to do than listen to me. Uh, but I thank you for the questions that came in. Um, you know, uh, I was a, wasn't really sure about about doing the, the Facebook Live thing. And it's so evolved, right? I started out talking into a phone. Now, if you were like here in this room with me, I'm talking to like this little ball with this blue eye in the middle. Uh, like a little R2-D2 thing, right? Um, but it allows individuals to kind of to, to see some of the things that we're doing in the department. You can check them out during the different times of the day. Uh, you know, I, I know life is so fast and hustle and bustle and things going on. And um, so if you get a chance, and, and if there's any questions that we didn't hit on or get answered, please let us please let us know, and, and I'll try, to, try to, to get back to you and address those. Some of you that had some questions are interested in, in the department, the academy, uh, if you, you know, if you reach out to us or we send you a link and I can have recruiters call you, uh, I think that's, that's very important. Um, but yeah, I appreciate all that. And, um, yeah, Liz, sorry, I couldn't be at the fishing clinic. It's been, it's been, it's a busy time of year in the summer. I was so unable to get away. I don't know if we were ever getting any officers out there or not, but, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if you turn it on, tuning in here late, but I was even like eight minutes late to my own meeting. Ugh. So uh, I'll try to do better this evening. At, uh, so we'll be back here at 6 o'clock. We'll do it again. Uh, I appreciate everybody that, that took time. And, and just again, to the men and women in this organization, sworn and civilian, I appreciate you, man. You, 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 the work that you do, um, it is hard right now in this profession. And, and uh, you know, there's going to be obstacles and bumps in the road. But we're going to keep moving forward. Um, we're going to keep moving forward. We may not be there at the pace I want. Um, you know, I, I, I like to go like this, and sometimes we have to slow down. Uh, but my intention is that we continue to improve this agency, our relationships, and work smarter uh, and harder, that we have a strong focus on our youth, that we reduce crime, um, and just improve the quality of life of our citizens. So uh, strong partnerships with our agencies. I want to I really uh, be remiss if I didn't thank the mayor and city council and our city manager for the support. You know, I will, you know, you talk a lot about oversight. Let me tell you, I've got it. Uh, they ask hard questions, but that is fair, and that's what they should do. Um, and we have some good, good conversations. Um, we talk about ideas and and things we can do better, and how we how we work together. And, and they ask questions about cases and and situations. So I will tell you, they are very involved in this department, and I, I just really appreciate the working relationship that we have. It means a lot. You don't have that everywhere. So I'm going to jump off here, and. Um, Thanks again for everyone. We'll be doing this again at 6 o'clock. I will be on time. That's me knocking on wood. And uh, I love you guys, man. Please take care. Be safe. And we'll talk to you again later. Bye-bye.